Let's talk about the file manager. And if you're not on the desktop, you can get to the desktop by going to Start Menu, clicking the desktop icon, just typing desktop, and then clicking on it. Or you can also, again, find it off the, the pull-down menu. Since I'm on the desktop, I can't find that. Now I'll be able to find it. Okay, once you're on the desktop, we're going to talk about the file manager. So we're going to open that up, and it looks a little boring right now. Not as cool as it used to be, but you know what? It's still cool. We just have to turn on the features. It actually has a lot more features than it used to have. So really, it's showing me my libraries, my documents, my music, my pictures, and my video library. And since this is a new computer, I don't have a lot of stuff out here. It's also showing me the desktop, so I can see what's on the desktop. I can go to a downloads, things that I've downloaded off the internet, recent places, things that I've currently been to. My documents is usually where well, you can see all the videos I'm recording and saving in my documents here. Um, also have a PowerPoint slideshow. I don't have any music. I have some pictures. So we can double click on them and we can see the icons. And uh, if I click here, I can preview my photos. Kind of cool. I'm going to make this be full screen. We also have picture tools. I can manage my pictures so I can select the picture. Is there anyone that needs to be rotated? Probably not. Now another thing that you can do, we got our pull down menus here and notice as we're pulling them down we see like tabs. That's because we do have tabs now. And in order to see the tabs, go back here to file, I can just click on this down arrow over here and that'll show me the tabs all the time. If I click on the other way, it's going to be like a, uh, a menu where if I click on it, I'll just see those things. Here, when we were in File, we can open a new window. Now it's going to open a new file manager, and I can visit a different area. I can come back here, and I can do a uh, open up a command prompt. Before you had to run, you had to... Uh, run a program. Now you can actually just open it up right away inside the file manager and do a directory or some other DOS command for those of you who are familiar with DOS. Or you can actually, I think you can run Internet Explorer and things like that. You just have to know the path for it. So it's kind of for the geeks that are out there. Uh, Windows PowerShell is very similar to the command prompt, but it's a newer user interface. Now this does have, uh, as soon as it comes up, it'll have uh, can do directory like I would normally do directory, but I can also do an ls, which is a Unix command. So uh, I can see the directory different ways, and the little a's here mean archived, and we're not going to get into any great detail of how the PowerShell works in this tutorial series. Come back here, uh, history. I can delete the history of the places that I've been, but since I have my own login and I'm the only one who can use my login, I don't care. I don't have any reason to delete my history. I can do help and about Windows. So we can click on that and it'll tell us about Windows 8, what version we're running. And I'll choose OK. Uh, who I'm logged in as. So if we stay here in the file menu, we can get help, and we can just have regular generic help. But I can also get that help by choosing the help icon over here. And I can also get the help by typing an F1 key if your keyboard's not remapped. So I'll type F1, and that's the help that comes up. It's the same as this help, and it's the same as this help. Okay, so different ways to get help. Uh, generally, if you're connected to the internet, the internet's probably the best way to get help. 
but uh, you can use the Microsoft help if you're offline. And then I can close this window by choosing close. Okay, since we opened it up in a second window, let's continue talking about it here. Now I can go to a home. So this is my home menu, and what can I do? I can't copy and paste because I don't have anything selected. So if I find a file, let's say I want this flower here, I'll select it by putting the check mark in it, or actually let's do this one. If I right mouse button click on this one, if you notice when I right mouse button click, not only do I get the pop-up menu, but it also is selected. Okay. Or I can just select it that way and I won't get the pop-up menu and I'm selecting it with the left mouse button. So now I have four fl flowers that are selected. I can select them another way as well. I'll unselect those by closing the check mark boxes. I can just click on one, hold the shift key down, and then click on another one and it'll select everything in that range. If I hold the control key down, actually, well, I don't even have to do it anymore, but in the old Windows operating systems, the control key would allow me to selectively unselect but now with this uh, with Windows 8, I can selectively unselect just by by checking the boxes to turn off my selection, and I can also just really kind of randomly choose a selection there. I don't have to use the control key anymore. So now that they're selected, now if I go to the home, I can copy these. So you copy them out of my pictures. I can go into my documents. I can do a right mouse button click in my documents. Do a new folder. Say photos. Go into photos. Double click to get in there. And then do a right mouse button click and a paste. And now it pastes them all into my directory go back to sorry pictures flowers double click on them and they're still here but now there's also a copy of them in my directory now I don't see them listed as flowers so what do we need to do we have to change the way that we view them I notice over here down on the bottom there's a little icon now it's listing them as a display I can click there and it lists them as flowers. So icons or not icons. I can also go up here to view and I can say large icons, small icons, or sorry, large, extra large, large, medium, small. When you get into small, it doesn't really show you pictures of them. Now again, see it's when I when I take my mouse off the menu bar keeps going away. If I choose this down arrow here, it's gonna stay there all the time. So I can list these out, I can get the details, the contents, tiles. There are many different ways I can display these. I can turn off the preview panel or I can Actually, I can uh, change the preview panels by clicking over here. I can turn off the navigation panel, which is on this side. See, now it's turned off. Now I can turn it back on again. I can expand the folders to open, which it's kind of expanding here. But if I click on that and we go to a different directory, It'll show me the files that are in that path. Okay, I can close that again. Let's go back to my photos, which are here. And we'll view those. Maybe the medium. Well, we'll do large. You can also sort by. How do we want to sort them by? By name, by date, by type. They're all photos, so they'll probably not sort at all. But by name, now it's doing them by name. And these are the names my camera gives the files. 
So we could do it by date, which, which ones did I take first in the order that I took them in. Again, we can go back here. I think this is the date that I copied it to the computer instead. I think we can right mouse button click on them and go into properties. And details will tell us anymore. It tells us what camera we used. An Olympus camera tells us the resolution of the photo, tells us a lot more information about how the picture was taken. Does it say the date? Yeah, it's probably took it uh, tw uh, 2001 at 11, 11 p.m. That's probably not right. Uh, I, I don't think it has the actual time that we took it in there, but these files have been copied from computer to computer to computer to computer, so I think some of that information got lost. Again, if we click on details, security, who has rights to access these files, and um, information, we can hide the files, read only. We talk about file properties later.